Hello everybody, my name is Suzanne and I grow cut flowers and garden in Devon in the UK. Um, this week's video is all about one of the local um, gardening and produce fairs that is in the town that's about just under four miles away from me and I've entered three classes and um, in this video I'm going to show you what I've entered um, and show you how it does at the show. Good evening all. It's a, oh, it's a blustery, cold, rainy evening. Um, we even had a little bit of thunder and lightning early, earlier. It certainly doesn't feel like August, but believe it or not, um, the date today is the 18th of August. And I only know that because I just looked at this program, which is for a local flower and produce show that is happening tomorrow. Um, about three three and a half miles away possibly four miles away from me here and i've entered some classes uh, last year i entered a ridiculous amount of classes and honestly it was i'd just taken on too much so last year i'd entered lots of the um flowers classes um this year i mean i've got 15 flower classes alone um think for example um dahlias, uh, roses, sweet peas, um, <clears throat> foliage plant, flowering shrubs, all sorts. But anyway, I've not entered any of those. Uh, but I have entered uh, what they're calling a special class, which is called the top vase. I have no idea um, if I've done what I've done is, is going to be any good for that because there are prizes for the top vase. First prize is £10. And when you consider the fact that it was a 20 pence entry fee, that'd be uh, not a bad prize at all. And in fact, it's £5 for second and £3 for third. So um, the rules for the top vase um, class are that you must have between five and 10 stems. There must be a minimum of two types of plant. and. It can't be, say, for example, perennial flocks and annual flocks. It has to be two completely different plants. Um, you can have more than that. Uh, according to the rules here, you can have 10 different stems if you want to, but it's a minimum of two. Um, the display will be judged out of a total of 35 points, split into 25 points for the colour, form, condition, quality and freshness of the flower on display and 10 points for the overall presentation and effect of the flowers in the vase. And the vase will be viewed from all directions and um, you, are, the, you are not allowed to use seed heads or foliage, which, um, ah, I love seed heads and foliage, but this, is, this isn't the flower arranging section, this is just the flower section, so. We'll get some seed heads in on something, I'm sure. Now, the vase can be any shape, um, and the vase itself will not be judged, um, but it needs to be in proportion with the flowers. Um, no accessories whatsoever, such as bows or additional foliage, uh, but you are allowed foliage that is growing naturally from each of the stems. Um, and you're allowed to use packing material to keep them in place. And they've even said including Oasis. Well, we won't be using Oasis, but apparently that's allowed. In contrast, the floral arrangements classes, for which I have entered two classes, wherever possible, exhibitors are asked not to use florist foam. So big thumbs up to my local produce fair. That is good um, in the floristry classes to be giving something else a go. Um, so they've got a really good variety of classes for this, but I haven't entered them all because, well, I've been at work today. Um, it's dark, I've got this horrible flickery light, which I apologise about, but there actually isn't any lighting in my workshop here. Um, so I've borrowed one um, from the actual workshop, you know, where a lot of hammering and drilling and that sort of stuff goes on. I've borrowed the light from there on an extension lead, so apologies about that. Um, but they had... Uh, uh, five classes 
for floral arrangements. Um, an exhibit depicting the coronation, which I have chosen not to enter only because the village the other side of me is having their produce fair at the beginning of September and that's coronation themed and I didn't want to do it twice so I've left that one out um, and then my favourite colour which I have entered rewilding which I have entered um, and all three of those classes are allowed a space of 18 by 18 inches um, but any height and in fact last year there was one entry in one of the classes and she was still only awarded second place by the same judge that's judging this year actually because her arrangement was ever so slightly larger than 18 by 18 so this is serious stuff so i've had my tape measure out a lot um it's actually harder than you think to keep something within because with flower especially the way i design you know i like things airy and sticking this way sticking that way it is it is a bit more tricky um but then the other um classes were a wrist corsage which i chose not to enter and a miniature arrangement in thimble which i also chose not to do so we've got um my favorite color rewilding and top vase um I've been working away in my shed here and I have been filming everything I've been doing but the light is so dreadful I honestly don't know what's going to make it into the video and what's not. Um, but I'll show you my top vase first which I hell of a job choosing 10 stems to put in this. Um, if, if, for example one of my classic bunches so this is one of my classic bunches that I sell and so I make these on a regular basis and I put 21 stems in these which is essentially um, three sevens but occasionally I'll stick five dahlias in which will, or five roses which just messes up three sevens a little bit but generally it's three sevens because I really like variety and I think that's one of the things that's missing in a lot of shop bought bouquets. Um, I, I love the real mix. Um, so we've got um, Didiscus here, we've got Status, we've got Dahlias, um, we've got some Daras and Dorcas, um, we've got some um, Feverfu here, and oh, there's some Phlox hidden behind that Cosmos, the Cosmos, um, and I think that's the seven, but it just i just like using variety so when somebody tells me i can have 10 stems the first thing i thought was well do i put 10 different stems in um but because i wasn't allowed seed heads and i wasn't allowed foliage that didn't really appeal to me either so what i've done oh, i bought this vase incidentally in pound land, it wasn't a pound, it was two pounds, but I wanted something narrow because 10 stems really isn't very many stems. And I didn't want something too wide at the top because then you, I really was gonna need a whole load of chicken wire or a floral frog or something. And that's fine if you're using a solid colored vase, but nearly all of my vases are glass. Um, and although you probably get away with a flower frog in glass, I don't think the chicken wire looks great. So anyway, I bought this vase, which is 10 inches tall. And because it's 10 inches tall, and I like my flowers to be one and a half times the height of the vase, the whole arrangement here is um, 25 inches to the top. And I measured that with a ruler to be very accurate. So in here, we've got two of the Abidu plant. You see, if I wasn't limited to the 10 stems, I probably would prefer three, but this is this is a bit of fun. This is, I'm sure there'll be some people taking it very seriously, but it's supposed to be a bit of fun. And then I've got two bits of blocks, cherry caramel. Oh, I don't know, it's supposed to look good all the way round. It doesn't look that great like that, does it? And then there's the other bit of blocks, cherry caramel there. 
and then Delia's, um, Joshua Joey, Karma Naomi, and Wine Eyed Jill. Uh, so yeah, it doesn't look great all the way around, I've got to be honest, but again with 10 stems, it is a bit tricky. I think that's probably the worst view there. I don't know what I can do about that. Is that a bit better? Oh dear. Oh well, anyway. I can't, I haven't got time to back around with this anymore. That, that is it, that's what I've done. Um, I'll probably get up early and faff around with it in the morning. Um, okay, and then I, I filmed loads of me doing the My Favourite Colour. And in fact, some of it will probably be okay because I filmed it yesterday when I didn't need a light and it was still light enough to film it. But what I filmed yesterday, I redid completely. I took the whole thing apart because I wasn't happy with the shape. Um, so I will show you what I mean. Okay, so this is the my favourite colour. And what I had done yesterday was I'd taken all these bits of twine and I'd just used one long length of twine and I'd gone round and round and round and round. And it had really pinched my willow basin at one end. I mean, it's still a bit pinched in now, but it's a lot better than it than it was. Um, so anyway, I've got a, a piece of buff willow, which I soaked. I was going to use um, fresh willow, but the wasp nest in the cut flower patch just makes me too scared. I'm too scared to go over there. Um, so I've used the buff willow and then I've wrapped it in raffia, which I may put a clip of that in. It took me ages because I almost had to sort of unfurl the raffia. Um, I think it took me about 20 minutes just to wrap this hoop in raffia. And the reason you need the raffia is because if you just try to attach the string to a piece of willow in a circle, it would just slide off. It, it needs something to grip to. Um, you could use ribbon. There's no reason why you couldn't use ribbon. But I opted for the raffia um, just because I like sort of paper um, it's biodegradable. So this hoop is completely biodegradable. Um, and then I've gone for a um, sort of a lilac -y colour string. And then I've got test tubes attached with purple cable ties. And I know they're plastic. And um, uh, yeah, I, I feel bad about that. I could have twined them on. Um, but actually I like the colour contrast of the different purple on the cable ties. And um, they, they, they will make this structure stronger. Um, I painted just a bit of um, ply here and I've just screwed my willow hoop on with one screw. It's quite important that I kept this quite light. I don't know if I've overstuffed it or not. Um, possibly I have. Um, and what we've got in here is this um, sort of houseplant foliage, which I will pop the name under the screen for you. And actually, this is a house plant that um, I took some cuttings from um, somebody I know from their house and it roots very easily, so very, very easily. So we've got a couple of pieces. There's another piece of that over here. And we've got Verbena boreensis, just the two stems here at the top. Um, we've got the sweet peas here, several sweet peas. We've got some of the um, status here um, we've got a buddleia. This is Dahlia Ambition down here, this really purpley one. And I don't know who this is because he was ordered as an Ambition and he's come out different. But actually, you know, it's great that he has because it's great to have the contrast of the two purples there. So I'm really pleased about that. And then the other thing that I've used is um, um, asparagus um, foliage. Um, and I think that is everything that's in there. And I was inspired um, to make this design by something I saw in a book. Books are good. I know we're all the online 
community these days. Um, but uh, there's a piece of um, work in here um, by um, Lana Bates. And um, it's described as um, showing the power of enclosed space. The space balances the plant material um, because the design, which occupies only slightly more space within the circle. Now, I haven't got a circle, mine's an oval, but that's what I was going for. Now, I know mine's way more cluttered than that and nowhere near as good as that, but mine's for a local produce fair. Good fun, joining the local community. Um, it's not a commission or anything. I'm not being paid to do it. Um, I, I mean, I, I think perhaps it is a bit clumsy, um, a bit overstuffed. But for my favourite colour, you know, come on, credit where credit's due. I thought, I thought that was certainly, you know, what my favourite colour is, without me having to say. Okay, now I haven't finished the last thing. I've got to finish it now. The rewilding. Um, but there were a few things I wanted to add to it, which I haven't cut. And I'm not going out there with a torch now in the dark. I really wanted one of two things: either some hawthorn berries, of which I put in a whole. 300 hawthorn plants three years ago as a new hedge so I've got ample supply of hawthorn berries or some unripe blackberries so I was looking for that sort of ready orangey colour but I didn't cut it and now I don't know whether to wait and do it in the morning or to see if I can make something that I'm pleased with with the selection of things that I've got on the floor here which I will now show you morning um unfortunately i overslept this morning which is not like me at all but i think it's just because it was so dark and gloomy outside my um, body decided oh, it's not light yet it's not time to get up um i'm just being cut a few bits and pieces of cut a bit of pits for them i've i've gone for the hawthorn berries because the blackberries don't look very nice and i've just cut a couple of bits of ivy as well um and i'm I haven't got very much time or sort of autumnal um, like these lovely Rebecca Sahara I mean the dahlias oh, I just love this kernel bronze but it's probably too big really um, and then I've got just a, a few odd apricotter um, cosmos um, and then maybe I don't know some calendula um, I think I'm going to put the foliage on first and then I can see how the mood takes me you know I'm just going to I'm not going to overcomplicate this. This is supposed to be art. So I've got all those flowers there to choose from. Um, so I will. I just need to put some water. I need to find all of the, the um, test tubes of water within this design and make sure I fill them all up with water. Um, so sorry. <laughs> I haven't just got out of bed. I have done the animals and had a cup of tea and all those things. But I, I feel like I just got out of bed. Anyway, let's crack on. difficult to film me um, making the rewilding one so I'm sorry I didn't I was just I, I didn't feel like you were gonna get a very good quality video I cannot work out now I've moved my workshop around the best way for me to film things so I'll have a play with that and hopefully um, I'll get better at finding out where to put the iPad but I will show you the two projects I did change the my favourite colour ever so slightly because it's just a little bit too dark so I've just added in a tiny bit of larkspur just to it was too samey it just needed a bit of contrast in it um, and I will show you the rewilding as well okay so I hope you can see that by adding the lighter larkspur here how that's really lifted that whole arrangement I'm much much happier with it now um, so that's the my favourite colour, and this is my favourite because it's more my style. 
this is my rewilding. I'm really happy with the colours um, and I love the dried and fresh look. Um, so now I've just got to work out how on earth I transport these in the car without destroying them. I'm really not happy with the top vase with the £10 price because it is supposed to look good all the way around and I'm not convinced that it does. Quick talk of the workshop because it's just had a bit of a change. I've got this dresser in here now which is quite good for storage um, and that used to be in my hall. Um, my workbench has just moved over to the corner. That used to be where the dresser is. Um, my little table there used to be where the pots were and the pots used to be where the table is. The chair is now there against the wall. My wrapping table is there. It's got these boxes on at the moment, which is all just dried flowers. Um, so I've not, I've only got a little bit of room for wrapping. Um, my kit is there. And then this is my table where I've just got flowers and things growing by the window there. And then lots of buckets of stuff on the floor. And then my shelving unit at the back. Um, and under there is just some stuff drying. Okay, so I'm back from the produce fair. Um, it was only a case of dropping the exhibits off this morning. Um, you're allowed back in at three o'clock to see everybody else's entries and see who's won the prizes. Um, and there'll be a raffle. And last year I did a prize for the raffle and I'd, I'd really like to do that again. So I'm going to um, try and find a bucket. I've got all my buckets. In fact, I could do hanging all this up to get a bucket. I might hang some of this up to dry, wash the buckets. Then I'm going to cut some flowers and we'll, I might just do a classic bunch. I'll see how the mood takes me, but we'll do a, a prize for the raffle. Um, anyway, I'm going to hang all this stuff up for drying. I'm just going to um, bunch it into bunches of the same type, take it up to my tack room, hang it in there, and then I'll have some buckets to wash and to go and cut some flowers. Okay, so here's my box all ready to go and hang up now. Uh, so I've basically elastic banded things into fives or tens depending on how leafy it is right i'll go and do that right okay i've got my 21 stems for my classic bunch so i'll go ahead and make that first I fancy a change from all the autumnal colours, so we've gone quite pale, pastely, and spring like here. Um, Didiscus, Status, um, Cosmos, Dorcas, um, a single white dahlia, which must have been from seed, uh, yellow jill, um, wine eyed jill, dahlias, oh, and a wee bit of fever food. I thought that looked quite nice, so now I'll wrap that. Okay, I am back. Um, had a really uh, good afternoon walking around looking at all the entries. Some of the classes weren't as well entered as they have been um, previously, some of the vegetables and one that um, surprised me was blackberries. There was only one plate of blackberries. Well you think anyone could go and pick some blackberries but anyway. Um, there was uh, the lady who entered last year, she had entered all the classes and she did really well and she won the trophy for the flower arranging as a whole. Um, she had entered all the classes. Um, she'd entered the class I didn't want to end, enter the, the coronation, um, and she had done a crown. And in fact, for the next local produce fair, which is the village the other side of me, I'm doing a crown. So I'm sort of glad I didn't do that. So she won that. Um, gutting. <clears throat> My rewilding wasn't even judged, um, and this was the note that was left by it. Such a pity, oversized, a beautiful arrangement, and no oasis. So, and she signed it. Um, I knew the base was within 18 by 18 inches because I'd drawn a chalk square on my workbench. And I had tried to keep the arrangement within, but I can see the birch twigs and the bracken had, you know, they're, they're sticking out. So I can see. 
So next year, I think I have to be far more cautious of that. And perhaps if I'm doing a sort of wild arrangement, make the square, you know, the two inches smaller again. Um, so that was disappointing. Um, and the lady who won the flower arranging cup um, won that class because there was a third entry, which was the lady's first attempt. And it was really good first attempt, but again, she had she was marked as oversized so um that was a shame so of the three entries in the rewilding class only one was um was within size and and therefore one um the top vase this judge i entered all the flower classes last year and i can't understand how he judges okay so i didn't enter any of the flower classes this year because um when i look at a flower the things that I want are freshness. So I don't want flowers that are pollinated. I want them to be, uh, where have I got an example? I don't think I've got a very good example in here, but I want a flower that's really fresh, you know, not pollinated, crisp, no browning on the petals, which I know with the weather we've been having, that's been difficult, but um, good foliage on it as well. No browning on the foliage, no bug marks, no teeth marks, no teeth marks in the flowers. So I, I'm, if I'm judging a flower, that is what I'm looking for. So when I enter flowers, that is what I'm entering. That's how I would judge it. Now, I don't know how you judge it, but that's how I would judge it. So that's when I'm selecting my flowers, that's what I'm doing. I cannot see how he judges his flowers, which is why with a top vase, I decided just go with what I've got, because I can't understand how he judges. I, I just don't see what he sees that I don't see so he'll for me it's over like it's over pollinated it's brown it's got teeth marks in it but he'll still think it's a good flower so I don't understand he obviously I'm not saying he doesn't know so basically I'm sure he is a very good judge but I would be really keen to know how he judges it so that I would know how to do better in those classes but anyway that's why I didn't enter into those classes this year but I did enter the top vase because there was prize money and surprisingly I did manage to come away with third prize for that and I was only actually one point away from second prize so you know that's not bad so we I won three pounds for third place um, for my top vase um, and I, I look at it and I, I can see that it's not perfect um, but I think my flowers are a lot fresher than the ones that were there but hey third prize i'm not gonna I'm not gonna complain about third prize but i am um, i did win the my favorite color class which was great there's no cup for that or trophy for that and there's no prize money for that but when um <clears throat> they finished the handing out the trophies the mayor then said, and now it's time pre to present the plate for the best in show overall. And would you believe it? For my favourite colour. So I'm glad I took it apart two or three times because I won a plate, you know. How cool is that? Um, it looks a bit tired because it's been in the car. Um, it's been in the car two ways now, um, but there we are, best in show, who would have thought it? Um, I think that's, we're going to end that video here everybody, thank you very very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.